Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Welcome back to MLW Vault. I'm your host, Balen Weissa, bringing you my full 2024 MLW season predictions. This episode has it all. We're going to be going over, like, start to finish. I went through every single series and kind of, like, off the top of my mind, picked out a series outcome, kept the standings. Um, as in this episode, we're going to be going over um, all-star break, like, what the league's going to look like at the all-star break with the standings the all-star break like results from the um <clears throat> it was going to be all-stars in the in the um all-star game and who's going to win the uh home run derby we're doing all of those we're going to go end of season standing predictions full postseason predictions from there and then lastly our award winners so this is a full episode all of our predictions for this season are going to be found in this episode below Um, as we are going to kind of jump right into it here. Before we do Around the League, we do this every single week. First up here, the spring training video came out on April 25th. This was last Friday. It was super fun to watch everybody back out there. Good to see the shorts, every team shorts back in in action for the first time. Tommy Coughlin had a a grand slam, had actually two home runs on the game. I think totaled six RBIs, five or six RBIs on the night. Uh, we saw Levi Fleer and Ty Fresnick, who were new rookie picks. Uh, and uh, kind of interesting thing, I wasn't really expecting this, but Jimmy Norp is going to be stepping up for Tommy Coughlin's commentating position. So now to open every episode, it will be Kyle Schultz and Jimmy Norp giving you the breakdowns, which uh, we're also now expecting for Jimmy Norp to be commentating some series. So for the five series that the that involve the Wildcats playing, it sounds like Jimmy Norp will be uh, taking the horn and be calling those those um, set of three games. So should be very interesting. I'm sure he's super good at it. So that was everything that happened in the spring training video. And then right after this is opening day. It is in less than a week. If you're listening to this, I hope I got it out in time. We're kind of pushing it to the last second here. But Mallards and e- I mean Magic and Eagles, that video is out on May 3rd. They have already played it. Um, it is opening day 2024. And I will come out with a full series preview episode out on Wednesday, May 1st. And that is some breaking news around this, or I guess not breaking news, but news around this podcast is that now we are going to be having weekly episodes every single Wednesday doing series previews. These series previews will entail um, a, you know, starting lineup slash starting pitching matchups for all every game. We're going to go over storylines. We're going to go for overstanding check-ins. Everything you need to know before this series video that comes out on Fridays, we're going to be going over the uh, these in these episodes on Wednesday. We're also going to be throwing in a little bit of an analysis of the series before. So these are going to be pretty full episodes packed here, coming out every single Wednesday now starting. I'm going to try and do kind of more of the deeper kind of analysis episodes that we've been doing here. Um you know, every once in a while, but definitely starting now every Wednesday, these will be the main focus for the podcast. And uh, also for the first episode, which is on Wednesday, before we start, we're going to be doing um, our preseason power rankings before opening day. Um, And then I'm sure, you know, like I said, for every episode following that, we will have a, um, we'll have a like series analysis of the last one. So be sure to expect those every single Wednesday. Um, and then the last thing from around the league is that the full season schedule came out. That's what I was waiting on to make this episode because I needed it to go kind of give me to give you like my accurate record predictions that actually follow the um, the full schedule for the season. So, yeah, that is everything around the league. But ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's jump into my full 2024 MLW series predictions. All right. We are not going to be doing any game time for this episode if you've been following the show for the past couple episodes i've been doing a game time before but because of how full this episode is going to be we're going to skip that and jump right into the league and how it's going to look at the all-star break so we're going to fast forward in time not to the end of the season but till about july each team has played three full series so nine games have been played to their name and be going through the standing so here's first up At the All-Star break, starting in the American League, the four teams are the Preds, Cats, Cobras, and Magic. First place at 6-3, and I'm going to have the Metro Magic. Six wins, three losses. I don't think they had a series loss in the first half, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't have, like, every single series here. Um, But Magic in first at 6-3. and In second place, I'm going to go the New Look Wildcats at 5-4. and and Then the Preds kind of tied with them at second at 5-4. and And then the Coastal Cobras having a rough first first half at 2 and 7. So, at the All-Star break my predictions for the AL. Magic in first, Cats and Preds second and third, Cobras in the rear. 
over to the National League. In first place, with a league-leading 7-2 and record, give me the Eastern Eagles in first place, followed by the Mallards, two games behind at 5-4. and four. Then we had third place, the Great Lakes Skaters at four and five. So they have a, um, they have a just sub one game from five hundred record at the All Star break for my prediction for the Gators. So they're going to be four and five, and that means in fourth place of the National League of the All Star break, I have the downtown Diamondbacks sitting at two and seven, two and seven. So the Cobras and D backs are kind of tied for last place in the league with two wins. Um, Eastern Eagles, number one overall with seven and two. Magic in second with six and three. A trio of five and four teams in Mallards, Cats, and Predators. <clears throat> Gators at four and five, and then Cobras and D-backs at two and seven. <clears throat> Out of the 12 total series of the first half, um, I have three sweeps. And first up in slate one, I have the Pacific Predators sweeping the Coastal Cobras in slate one. I have the Magic, again, sweeping the, sweeping the Coastal Cobras in slate two. So that means I have the Cobras starting 0-6 in this season. And then in Slate 3, I have the Eastern Eagles over the downtown Diamondbacks, which is going to really separate those teams. Coming into the series, the Eagles are going to be 4-2. D-backs are going to be 2-4. and four. So kind of still some wiggle room to um you know switch up the standings. I'm going to go a dominant day for the Eagles. It feels like the Diamondbacks have that one series a year where they get swept, and I think it's going to be... Um, courtesy of the Eagles in slate three to put their first half at two and seven. Keep in mind, the last time that the Diamondbacks started two and seven in the first half, they went on to win the World Series. So keep that in mind. We'll see what my World Series prediction is at the end of the episode. But at the All-Star break, I think the All-Star rosters. So this one was kind of weird because it like, I don't know exactly how many um, each team gets i think i put six right now um but the american league your all-stars for the american league give me grant miller rj walgate kyle schultz ryan cratch trevor bonham and patrick ballman so no players from the cobras there's two from three from the magic we have one from the preds and then two from the wildcats so kind of some familiar faces in the american league you know miller walgate schultz cratch um all returning you know they're i think practically a shoe in for every all-star game now and then kind of Bonham and Patrick Ballman the Wildcats first overall pick um I'm gonna go having a good first half putting himself in the all-star um all-star team next up here the National League the six players I picked for the National League in the all-star game Dallas Allen Landon Urgaitis of the Eagles Jordan Robles Tommy Coughlin of the Mallards and then Jimmy Norp and Jacob Pishka of the Diamondbacks so no Gators um no Gators get to be up here in the um, NL and AL or the National League roster, I guess. So that means no Cobras and no Gators are going to be involved in the All Star game. Uh, you know, I guess I said the American League wins seven three. So if I say that I'm recording this on April twenty eighth, if the American League goes on to win by an exact score of seven to three, then I I think I'm a genius and I think you all owe me money. Of some sort. Next up here, the home run derby winner. You know, everyone's saying, okay, well, you know, the the go to pick has got to be Ryan Crouch. But here at MLW Vault, we think outside of the box. We do, okay? That is why my home run derby picker is going to be uh, Ryan Crouch. I'm going three Pete. First time ever in MLW history that Ryan Crouch, or first time ever in MLW history that a player goes back to back to back in the home run derby. Um, and I think Crouch is going to do that guy. The only reason that he loses this is if he if he can't be there that day or if he, for some reason, doesn't get voted. Um, but, I mean, I think no matter what, Crouch gets a bid into the tournament because he has won the last two times. Uh, I mean, I could see maybe him facing Grant Miller in the championship round or maybe, you know, a rematch with Jonah Heath or maybe uh, Chris Cheatham who made a run, I think, last year, two years ago. Um, but home run derby winner. Give me a three-peat by Mr. Ryan Cratch himself. So that is the end of our um, all-star break predictions. Once again, Eagles, number one overall uh, record, Magic, game behind. As let's now jump <clears throat> to my final 2024 regular season standings. So this is how, in my mind, the league is going to shape up here. We're going to go from four to one, and we're going to start in the American League. So the team that is missing out on the postseason, the American League in 2024, my prediction is the Coastal Cobras. 
and they're going to not only are they you know not going to miss out on the or miss out on the postseason they're going to do it in a bad fashion i'm expecting a long 15 games from the cobras as in my prediction is they're going to finish 3 and 12 miss out on the postseason for the second year in a row i think this lineup is too much to handle for drew davis i think the gators will do significantly better than them we'll see where where i file them out here in the nl but the gators in fourth place finishing three and twelve in third kind of a little shocker for me especially as i was going through it but uh, i have the pacific predators in third place but their record is going to be five and ten they are not going to have a good second half whatsoever i think we kind of see that um We've seen that in the past from the Predators, how they have um, had one good half of their seasons, either the first half, the first nine games, they'll win, you know, seven or eight. And then the last half, they will, you know, get double swept and then miss out or not miss out, but maybe lose the first series of the postseason. Um, so the Preds, in my mind, they're going to f- be finishing five and ten. I think they get double swept in the second half over the Magic and Eagles. Um, granted, that is not an easy uh schedule either for the Preds but give me them finishing five and ten kind of falling off in the second half so that means in second place I have the Western Wildcats um finishing a game above 500 at eight and seven I think they have a good year um kind of record wise so I had them at five and fourth the all-star break and then um finishing at eight and seven and then which means in first place I have the Metro Magic breaking their single season franchise win record finishing with 11 wins the first overall um seed going to the playoffs the the best record at the end of the season is going to be the metro magic going 11 and 4 i think they brought back everybody they didn't try to incorporate somebody new into a lineup that knows what they need to do or knows that what they do good and know it works um and i have the magic having a tremendous first and second half which is a complete good season so going six and three um which means I have them going five and one in the second half in their last two series, including a sweep over the Preds and a series victory against whoever that is. So Magic finishing eleven and four, first overall seed in the entire league and first seed in the American League going into the playoffs. Next up here, the National League. Now, at the All Star break, I had the Diamondbacks two games behind the Gators at two and seven, Gators at four and five, Mallards Eagles at second and first. The fourth place team, my prediction, the National League team that is missing out on the postseason. Give me the Great Lakes Gators finishing six and nine. I think they get they go two and four in the second half. And I think including a series sweep somewhere. No, actually, I predicted they did not get swept. Just two series losses. I think how it all shaped up is the Gators and Diamondbacks, who were both five and seven. Um Five and seven were going into a series, and they actually play the final series of the season, regular season series of the season. Um, and it was a essentially a postseason tournament because a winner of that series would get into the playoffs. And I had the uh, Diamondbacks, you know, late in the season, there's not a team you can count out um, more than the Diamondbacks, so or count out less, I guess, than the Diamondbacks. So in fourth place in the National League, give me the Great Lakes Gators. So as much as it does pain me to say that because, you know, of course, you you want to see teams succeed that have been bad forever. If you're a big baseball fan, I'm a big baseball fan. That is why watching the Baltimore Orioles last season was so much fun. Why I'm really root, pulling for them is because they were terrible for like 20 years. Um, and now suddenly they're winning the American League East. And then, you know, more baseball like the Texas Rangers, who two years ago lost, I think it was 101 games. Then they come back and win the World Series just like that. So it does pay me to see a team that struggles um struggle once again i think the gators are making the right steps to get better but i've said the past couple episodes that i don't think it's going to correlate with wins immediately it has this team is brand smacking new they are not bringing back reese harris so the gators actually have the um smallest lineup coming in in 2024 with only five players everybody else has six and then the cobras have eight so i mean maybe that's a secret to success maybe you know that's how they won the World Series four or five years ago in 2020. Um, they had three guys, and they brought three guys to the Meadows every single day. Um, now only one of those players remains, and um, not Chadwick Boseman. That's, uh, Chris Cheatham. No. <laughs> and uh, Chris Cheatham, and now he is the manager. So Gators, 6-9. and nine. I think they sniff the postseason. They play 
contending wiffle ball. They play contending wiffle ball all season long and then fall one game short to the downtown Diamondbacks. So I have finishing in third. They put together a great second half. They go five and one, including a sweep over the Cobras in slate four. Um, so the Diamondbacks finish seven and eight and in third place in my mind in the National League. And then, so that comes down to the Mallards and Eagles at the All Star break. I had the Mallards at four, at five and four, and the Eagles at seven and two. So, you know, a two game series lead um, over the Mallards for the Eagles, but I have them giving away that lead. They're giving away that lead. So first place in the National League, give me the Midwest Mallards. Yet again, another double-digit win regular season for the Ducks. I got them finishing 10-5. and five. And then in second place, essentially a tie. I got the Eagles also at 10-5. and five. Um, Eagles have a slower second half going 2-4, and four, but still a, a very good 10-5 and five record. I think the... Um, uh, the tiebreaker over the Mallards that put them in this spot is a series victory. Um, so the Mallards get the first place at 10 and five, which means um, we got our playoff uh, series set with the Gators and Cobras missing it out. And then our DS is coming up soon. So the second half sweeps, I have slate four being the kind of slate of sweeps this year. First up the Diamondbacks over the Cobras in slate four um, that really puts them back on track. And then in the like more shocking one of the season. It feels like it really depends on the day for both of these two teams. Give me the Mallards sweeping the Eastern Eagles in slate four. So again, probably when we're up there, this will change. But right now, you know, for full regular season standings, looking this at wide scope, I got a bad day for the Eagles. Mallards pop off for one day. Eagles have a bad one. Um, and that ultimately kind of puts them in first place in the National League. Um, then also in slate four, I have the Magic over the Pacific Predators. So that is a big separator for them. And then in slate five, I have the Eastern Eagles sweeping the Predators again as the Preds finish their 0-6 second half. All right. Eliminated teams, once again, the Cobras and Gators. Now, before we get into our playoff predictions, here are my um, player predictions for my league leaders. We have home runs, OPS, batting average, ERA, and pitching wins. So home runs. At the end of the regular season, Give me Grant Miller, going to be leading the league in home runs. Last year, I believe he finished with five. Um, Tommy Coughlin led the league at six last season. So um, I think, and also, well, so Tommy Coughlin led the league with six, but Miller played three less games than Tommy as he could not make a series. So um, I think Grant Miller plays a full 15 this regular season, and he will lead the league in home runs, I think, by a good margin. I think he'll have seven or eight honestly i think it's going to be a tremendous year for him um and i mean i think second place will have you know six or five so home run leader grant miller ops it's going to not be grant miller give me jordan robles leading the league in ops here i think he is going to be a have he's going to have a massive year at the plate once again um i think he's going to have very similar home run numbers although grant miller will have maybe one or two more than him, but I think Robles is going to get a lot more base hits across the season. So we know Jordan can show up a little bit more consistently than Grant Miller can. The match or the, I think both teams probably have a special series um, as that is going to be announced very soon. But I think Jordan Robles is going to lead the league in OPS and then batting average. I again have a new leader. Give me Kyle Schultz leading the league in batting average. He can always have a really high average at the plate. Uh, you know, his hits. Kyle Schultz, aging like fine wine in this league, although we're not sure how many years he has left. But, I mean, he's still putting up really, really good numbers. Give me Kyle Schultz leading batting average. So that was the hitting. Now the two kind of main pitching stats, we're going ERA and then pitching wins. So in my mind, the league leader for earned run average at the end of the season, give me Jordan Robles having a tremendous two-way season, leading in the most important hitting stat and the most important pitching stat um i think you know given maybe a around a one era for robles maybe even a sub one maybe like an 095 or maybe 094 for robles um an era and then pitching wins i'm gonna go with dallas allen of the eagles i think he's starting 10 games for them they win 10 games maybe he doesn't win all 10 of his games maybe at least uh six or seven maybe eight that's a little bit of a stretch but if dallas allen is to go um like eight and one or eight and two in his uh season that is 
for sure, at least a Cy Young bid, to say the least. So, once again, home run leader, Grant Miller, OPS, Jordan Robles, batting average, Kyle Schultz, ERA, Jordan Robles again, and pitching wins, Dallas Allen. All right, next, on MLW Vault, going over my 2024 postseason predi- predictions leading up to my World Series winner. That's next. All right, following my regular season standings, starting off with the National League Divisional Series, the 2024 NLDS I have the three seed downtown Diamondbacks who finished who finished seven and eight against the two seed Eastern Eagles who finished ten and five. A rematch of the NLDS last season. Di- except the scripts are flipped this year. The Diamondbacks are coming in as pretty heavy underdogs for the Eagles. I'm not sure who. Um, not sure who I had winning this series in the regular season, but Diamondbacks lost three more games than the Eagles did. Um, Eagles very much putting together a season that could be their year. I think Dallas Allen is pitching super well. I think uh, we saw Daniel Schultz pitch during um, the spring training. So I think that'll be really interesting to watch on opening day. If the Eagles um, pitch Daniel Schultz on opening day against the Magic, I wouldn't be surprised if they just go with Blade in game two. Um, We know Dallas is going one and three. So I don't know. We'll see. But um in the outcome of the 2024 NLDS, give me a shocker. Diamondbacks take it 2-1. They upset the Eagles, and they get their revenge for last year's NLDS. It's a, another early exit for the Eagles, a very disappointing end to their season after having a really good regular season. Uh, I think this game, uh, the Diamondbacks sandwich their wins. They take games 1-3, and three, so it really will come down to a winner-take-all game 3 in this one. And the Eagles will fall just short to um, Mr. Jimmy Norp. So give me the Diamondbacks back in their postseason groove as they advance to a matchup with the Midwest Mallards in the NLCS. Before we do that, jump into our American League 2024 American League Divisional Series here against the three seed Pacific Predators versus the two seed Western Wildcats. So Preds have a pretty difficult. Um, Second half, they go 0-6 in their second half. They get swept by the Magic and the Eagles, two very difficult series there. Um, and the Wildcats have a good season. They finish 8-7. and seven. Um, I think they have good production from their rookies. I think Patrick Ballman has a slow second half, though, after his really good first half. Uh, I think Frensnick played pretty well. Um, I think overall they get good production from every player on the team, no matter what. So I think Jackson Pearson um, makes his pitching on the mound here and there. I'm really interested to see if the Wildcats go with Ballman. We saw, um, or on the mound, we saw Jackson Pearson pitch in spring training. So um, that makes me believe that they will go with Jackson Pearson. But who knows? We know Both Ty Fresnick and Patrick Ballman are two-way players for the Wildcats, so um, you never know. But in the outcome of the American League Divisional Series, I think the Western Wildcats finally bury their burden of losing to the Preds in the postseason, and they sweep them in two games. Give me the Wildcats advancing to their first American League Championship Series since 2021. Um, after meeting with the Preds in the ALDS. This this is always the ALDS. It's, I feel like this has been it for the past... It has been in it for the past two seasons. Um, but this one, I think the Wildcats, they bury their demons and they get into the ALCS. I think they have a good series overall and the Predators just do not win a game past the um, All-Star break. I think it's a very bad fall-off. They finish the season 0-8. Um, and yeah, finishes he's on an eight game losing streak. So Wildcats advancing to the American League Championship Series off a sweep of the Predators. Here we go. This is where it gets big. National League Championship Series. Best of three winner on to the World Series. Now we've seen this tale one too many times. The Midwest Mallards come in as a one seed in the NL National League. They, they have a great season. They win 10 games in 2022. They finished 11 and four last season. They finished 10 and five and both times they've lost in the NLCS. It it's, it points to concern for the Mallards because it's now back to back years that they've been out just like that after, you know, being the best team in the league in the regular season for a good chunk of the season. Um, 
and then they lo- and then they lose. And Jordan Robles gets this persona of being a postseason choker. And Tommy Coughlin steps up every single time. He has clutch home runs every single Mallard's um postseason series, even before the whole Robles era back in um, 2017 when they won it. Um, but I think it finally all comes together for the Midwest Mallards. I think Jordan Robles pitches on the mound. He shuts them down. If they can get to Norp, that means they can get to the rest of this lineup. And the Mallards in two games will finally get past the NLCS, bury their demons similar to the Wildcats. And the Midwest Ducks, the Mallards, are on to the 2024 World Series. I think D-backs have a good run, but I think it ends kind of um, abruptly in the NLCS. So, with the Mallards waiting, the AL that sends up an ALCS between the Western three-seeded Western Wildcats, it's a two, actually, two-seeded Western Wildcats and the one-seeded 11-win Metro Magic. This is going to be one of the greatest postseason series we've ever seen. Last year it was in the Wildcats and Preds ALDS. I think this this series is going to be the greatest of the of the season. It's going to be unbelievable. And I have the well, first of all, before we talk, before I say who the winner is, the storylines of this would be immaculate because we know the Mallards are into the championship already. Um, it's will likely be in a, in another spot. We don't know where it is. Um, as you know, now they're building that, uh, like trend or like tradition of having the world series in a, um, outside spot. So, um, the Mallards are waiting the winner. So if the magic win, it's a, you know, top dog, 10 and five Mallards, 11 and four magic, a pipe it up podcast world series, which would make for the best episodes of that podcast we've ever seen magic versus Mallards or the wildcats win. And they, they kind of de- they're the team that dethrones the Metro Magic, and the Wildcats win, which sets up a Kyle. It's a commissioner face-off of Kyle Schultz and Tommy Coughlin, the two guys that run this league. We'll have to see somebody commentate the possibly five games of that series. It's the young guys and the Wildcats who have a bright future. Patrick Ballman, Ty Fresnick, you know Jackson Pearson against the win now Mallards with Brennan Jorgensen. And Kyle Schultz, I mean, not, I mean, Tommy Coughlin, right? Brendan Jorgensen, Jordan Robles, um, Tommy Coughlin, all those guys. So that means with all that said, give me the, I think, you know, will the Wildcats dethrone them? I'm going to go not quite. Not yet will the Magic be dethroned. They live to see one more series as the Magic are going to beat the Wildcats in the ALCS two games to one and advance to a back-to-back World Series here, which that sets up my official World Series prediction. Say it right now. I said I'll put it in a graphic. I'll put it somewhere. My World Series pick. Midwest Mallards versus the Metro Magic. Battle of the M's. Battle of the Pipe It Up Podcast World Series here. We have we have Jordan Robles against, against them. RJ Walgate. We have the heavy hitters of Tommy Coughlin versus Grant Miller. And we have, you know, the role players of... It's weird to say Brennan Jorgensen's a role player, but Brennan Jorgensen and Jack Agner and Trevor Bonham, a star-studded World Series, and I think the outcome will be in four games. So the winner of this series will be 3-1. And give me, if you've listened to the show, you know I've already said, but give me the Midwest Mallards winning the 2024 World Series. That is my official pick. Put it in stone. The Mallards are winning the 2024 World Series. That is my prediction. I think they beat the Magic 3-1. I think Tommy Coughlin wins um, his first ever World Series MVP because they're winning 2017. Um, World Series MVP went to, what's his name? Oh, God. oh Noah Dabrico. Um, so Tommy Coughlin wins his first ever World Series MVP award. And then Quack Attack, the Mallards finally win. And it's over. They not only do they get past the NLCS, but I think they go on to win it all over the Metro Magic and Jack Agner and Grant Miller. So the Ducks are my official 2024 World Series prediction and 3-1 Tommy Coughlin World Series MVP. Jordan Robles has a great series. I think this is going to be very similar to last year's World Series, how, you know, the stars do their jobs. They play well, but it really comes down to the, the role players. And I think 
honestly, straight up, I think the Mallards have more depth than the Magic, and I think that's honestly kind of safe to say. So um, give me the Midwest Mallards in four games defeating the Metro Magic in the 2024 World Series. All right, we are kind of cruising through this episode. I didn't really expect for this to go this quickly here, but we have um, another big part here. As with the Midwest Mallards winning the 2024 World Series, this now follows with my 2024 award award winner prediction. So of the nine awards, rookie of the year, most improved, most dedicated, most clutch, gold glove, manager of the year, silver slugger, Cy Young, and the MVP I have selected nine players on who I think is going to have a very good season and uh, who is going to take home these honors. So first up here, first award is the Rookie of the Year. Now, the answer, or the not the answer, the uh, expected answer is Patrick Bauman because he's number one overall. Feels like he's in that really kind of sweet age of like, oh, he's kind of still a rookie, but he's, you know, He's older than these like 16-year-olds that are being thrown into the league. So uh, Ballman is going to have a good season. I have him as an all-star in the first half, but then again, I kind of said he will fall off or have a struggle in the second half. Um, and then, so then in second, like an order of the draft picks on who wins Rookie of the Year, who wins it. So it's Ballman in first. Then we have Jeremy Adams in second on the Gators, um, who is a two-way player. Then we have Ty Fresnick who is a two-way player for the Wildcats. So Cats have two of the top three Rookie of the Year um, expected winners. And then fourth would be Carter Richard, I believe, at the Diamondbacks. So with that said, give me Jeremy Adams of the Great Lakes Gators winning Rookie of the Year. I think um, Adams is, you know, I think Ballman is going to make the more, uh, like, highlight worthy plays all season kind of hit like the big home runs when it matters and kind of be a big part in the wildcats moving on to the um kind of final for the alcs but i think when we kind of look at the stats we're going to find out that jeremy adams had a much more good season it's just that the gators don't get um you know as many views because of their struggles so i have jeremy adams winning the 2024 rookie of the year on the great lakes gators following that the most improved this one's interesting because I think there are a ton of good guys that we could um, like give to this. Um, if we have like uh, like finalists, almost I think the Cobras have a couple really really good candidates, um, like uh, Brennan Bernoski, their pitcher who went 0 and 6 last season. They have Andy Durand who's making a comeback. We have, um, I mean, we could make an argument for Brendan Zerlag even on the Cobras winning this most improved award. Um, but outside the Cobras, I think the Eagles have Daniel Schultz. If he makes a big comeback pitching, he could win it. Um, let's see. Magic, not really. Uh, not the Preds, no. Not the Cobra. Well, yeah, Cobras and then the Magic, not really. Mallards, no, not really. Uh, so... You get it. Uh, my 2024 most improved player of the year is going to go to Andy Durant. I think he has a kind of quiet, good season on the plate. Um, after taking a year break from uh, Wiffle Ball, it's definitely going to take him a bit to warm up. But, <clears throat> um, you know, I'll give Andy Durant like three home runs. We'll give him, you know, a little three bomb season, maybe a 250 uh, batting average, maybe a little 800 OPS, a, a maybe a worthy resume for most improved. And I think Duran's going to win it. I think he has a good kind of spot on the Cobras, a good season. Um, he's going to be a bright spot in their um, overall downer season, I guess, if you will. But any Durand is going to take most improved player of the year. Um, I'll say that is the only Cobra that is winning the rest of these awards. So any Durand, my official most improved of the year player prediction next up here. Most dedicated. Now this one is tough. You can't really blame me for this because this is a um, commissioner uh like award this is what Kyle Schultz gives out so it was Casey Bennett this season but I'm gonna go with Jimmy Norp winning most dedicated I think he is going to um fit in really well with uh you know he has this he has a much bigger responsibility within the league now doing these pregame and commentating series so I think Kyle's gonna recognize that and he's gonna give Jimmy Norp the most dedicated award so now one don't really need to talk about that too much as that's a near impossible one to predict. So I'm going to go with North, but we'll see most clutch. 
Now this award is decided in the in the postseason. That's just the truth. So it was it was AJ Ackerman last season, and go figure, he had um, three home runs in the World Series. Did nothing in the regular season. Nothing like noteworthy, I guess. Should say nothing, nothing. Um, so with that said, with the Midwest Mallards winning the World Series. And the World Series MVP going to Tommy Coughlin III. Give me Tommy Coughlin III winning the Most Clutch Award. I think he wins World Series of or World Series MVP for his offense. I think Robles is going to take a lot more time to focus on the mound than at the plate, and I think that should honestly be the Mallard's game plan for most of this season is to give Robles, you know, focus on throwing strikes on the rubber, and then we'll have. TC3, and now Brennan Jorgensen backing you up at the plate, which that is on its own a deadly duo. And then you throw in Robles again. You just forget how I love that move. But um, most clutch, I think, is going to go to Tommy Coughlin. I'll give him like two home runs in the World Series, maybe a walk-off. You never know. They win it in four games, so there's not a super big sample space to be great. Um, but I'm going to give it to, uh, to Tommy Coughlin winning the 2024 most clutch. Next up is the Gold Glove. Now, Another interesting award because for the past three seasons it has gone to uh, Mr. Jimmy Norp, and I believe after uh, once Jimmy Norp's career does ultimately end, which I don't you know don't want to talk about that with him yet, but uh, I think the uh, Gold Glove award, award will go down as a Jimmy Norp award um, w- way way into the future of MLW. So I mean, I guess what I'm about to say doesn't really back that up. But I'm going to go a new winner this season. I think Jimmy's going to make incredible plays on the mat, on the field, but I honestly might have been robbed this year. I'm going to go with Kyle Schultz winning gold glove. He makes such good defensive plays in the field every single year, and somehow he hasn't won gold glove once in the past three seasons because Jimmy Narp has been the uh, three-peat champ. So, um I'm going to give it to Kyle. I think, you know, he's going to have a very similar season to last year um, in the in the field with, you know, he got the number one play uh, in the top plays video. He just, I think he's, in, he's probably in those, like, more of those top play videos than he's not. So, uh, Kyle Schultz winning gold glove. He dethrones Jimmy Norp after three years. Maybe Norp will take it right back in 2025. But give me Kyle, take it home, gold glove. Next up, manager of the year. This one is never not really given to the World Series winner, um, except it hasn't actually the past uh, two out of the last three seasons. little tidbit here. Jimmy Norp has never won manager of the year, and he took his squad back-to-back for the first time since 2014 and 15. It might have been, if I'm not mistaken, but... So, uh, surprisingly, surprising that Jimmy Norp has never won Manager of the Year somehow. But uh, I'm going to go with Tommy Coughlin winning Manager of the Year this year. I mean, takes his mallet to the World Series, makes a what is going to pay off as one of the best moves at the draft with Brennan Jorgensen. I just realized these sound bites might age terribly, like in like November. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but I'm going to go with Tommy Coughlin winning Manager of the Year. Uh, I mean, go figure. Can't really give it to anybody else in this position because the World Series is is Magic Mallards, and uh, Jack Agner has won it. Uh, Final Four. I mean, maybe uh, Kyle Schultz can put his name up there because he, you know, his two draft picks are going to pay off, and they're going to go into the ALCS. Um, and I mean, Jimmy Norp. I feel like he always makes good managerial moves, but um, I'm going to give this one to Mr. Tommy Coughlin, the third for Manager of the Year. All right. Next up here on MLW Vault, we will move into my predictions for the three bigger awards of Silver Slugger, Cy Young, and your 2024 Most Valuable Player. That's next. All right. With all of that said here, we come into our final moments of our award or our full season predictions here. As we are now again to the three kind of major awards of the season after the Mallards win the World Series. Here we have Silver Slugger, Cy Young, and Most Valuable Player. The better hitter, the best hitter, the best pitcher, and the best player in the league. Starting out with Silver Slugger. Now, could go a couple different ways with this. I have said that. I said I think Grant Miller's leading in home runs. I think Jordan Robles is leading in OPS. And I think uh, Kyle Schultz is leading in batting average. So not even close to a triple crown. I think this year's Silver Slugger is going to be a lot closer than the... Um, 
last seasons that it has been. Um, and although OPS is the most important stat for a hitter, which is um, on base plus a slugging percentage, so a really, really good OPS, at least in baseball, is a 700 OPS. But in wiffle ball, I'd say a good, like a solid OPS is like 800, 900. I think in 900, you're like, okay, you're a very high quality hitter. And not only did Grant Miller surpass, this is last season, not only did Grant Miller surpass that uh, nine good 900 OPS mark, he had a 1,700. It's on a 0.90, a 1.7. So almost a full thousand points above some players and even a 700 OPS is good. So Grant Miller um, won it easily last year. This was one of, this one should have been the most anonymous award. I think it was. And uh, I have a back-to-back silver slugger coming in 2023 and 2024. Give me Grant Miller, the Metro Magic winning silver slugger. That is the Magic's first award of the um, the entire uh, set of awards in 2024. Um, and it comes in Grant Miller for the silver slugger award. I think he is going to have a very similar season. And, you know, like we said, oh, he has 12 games, you know, 15 games won't make that big of a difference. Only one more series. He had a pretty good sample size. I think Miller plays in 15 games, and I think he is goes on a tear. So give me Grant Miller with the Metro Magic winning Silver Slugger. I don't think he's going to be a lot of pitching. I think the Ma- Magic should do the very best they can of preserving what they did last season um and bringing it into 2024 so you know not don't don't touch it you put have wallgate start two games a series and then have bonham in the middle have graham miller do his thing at the plate have jack agner hit the occasional bangerang home run um and the magic should be just fine so give me grant miller winning the 2024 silver slugger now the cy young what is going to be this upcoming season's best pitcher now last week or last episode i did my hot takes and i said that dallas allen would win the mvp now i you know we'll see who i predicted for mvp um in just in just a sec but uh i think dallas allen is going to win the cy young in 2024 i said he is going to lead the league in pitching wins i think he's going to have a very solid era maybe just over one maybe give me a 112 ERA, um, maybe a 120 ERA, which is still incredible. Um, and I think Allen has seven, six to six to eight wins on the mound on the bump in uh, 2024. So give me Cy or give me Dallas Allen winning the best pitcher award, Cy Young in 2024 of the Eagles. That is their first um, win of the night as well. As here we come into MVP. This is a final prediction of my of the season, final prediction of the episode. Who is going to win the 2024 Most Valuable Player? So I'm gonna I'm gonna lay out three finalists for you. First finalist is Ryan Cratch, back to back MVP. He's gonna do the same stuff. He's gonna be remarkable on the mound, or and, and at the and at the plate. He's gonna be good all year long. Ryan Cratch is gonna be an MVP finalist. Following Cratch, I'm going to have Jordan Robles, who I predicted to have the highest OPS and the highest ERA. So a tremendous season from Jordan Robles is loading and coming up. And my third one, I'm going to go with Dallas Allen. I predicted he would have the most pitching wins. I think he's said he's going to win the Cy Young. Um, so these are going to be your three finalists. So no Grant Miller. I think, uh, well, kind of the like three man finalists have been um like disbanded almost over the past couple seasons because of like the awards ballot now has either six or seven choices for MVP. Um I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go seven off the top of my head. So we're gonna go three finalists of MVP Ryan Kraft, Jordan Robles, and Dallas Allen. Will a player, you know, dethrone Ryan Cratch? I think yes. I'm gonna I gonna go. I think Cratch MVP run is going to fall just short in 2024 after a great season. Every year Ryan Cratch plays, he's gonna be an MVP finalist. It just depends on the players that are around him. Um, so now if that said, it's gonna come down to Jordan Robles and Dallas Allen. Dallas Allen's gonna lead the league in pitching wins and win the Cy Young. Jordan Robles is gonna lead 
lead the league in the most important hitting stat, OPS, and the most important pitching stat, the ERA. And with that said, your 2024 MVP is going to be Jordan Robles of the Midwest Mallards, topping off the 2024 season. Is honestly, it's going to be a, the year of the Ducks. I think the Mallards have a successful year. I think Brennan Jorgensen was perfect. Getting rid of Caden Irwin is a great call. This team is so good. We do have a question mark for the number two arm on the team right now. We Honestly, we don't know who it is. From the sounds of it, of the Piper Up podcast and what we've seen from Tommy Coughlin, we've heard that Preston Colm will be the Midwest Mallards number two arm. But keep in mind that we've seen, you know, there are two guys that kind of have kind of deep in the roster. They have Brendan Davenport, who we saw in the bump, who threw some quality pitches, but the outing just got away from him when he pitched in Philly against the Preds. So we have Brendan Davenport, who we've seen has pitching prowess. He can he can go on the mound and give you outs. We have Matt Carlington, who we have not seen on the mound, but is a really good pitching coach. Um, And, you know, Colm, Preston Colm, who were actually almost, I'd say, expecting to, to uh, get some pitching starts. And then we have uh, Brendan Jorgensen, who I th- pitched almost half of the Gator season last year as he split with um, uh, uh, Chris Cheatham. So this team, you know, it's not <clears throat> the strongest bullpen, but with an offense that goes Robles, Coughlin, Jorgensen, and then anybody else below them, you're going to score each game. And so it's just, it's honestly, I don't think pitching is that important with an offense that has this much upside. So I think Robles is going to have a great year on the bump anyways, lead the league in earned run average. Um, and I think he wins, uh, he wins the most valuable player in the year of the duck. So once again, if we recap here, I have the Mallards winning the world series. I have the Regular season league leaders of home runs and Grant Miller, OPS and Jordan Robles, batting average and Kyle Schultz, ERA and Jordan Robles, and pitching wins in Dallas Allen. Um, the final four in the American League Championship Series have the Magic over the Wildcats. And in the um, National League Championship Series, I have the Mallards over the Diamondbacks. Um, and then, of course, my 2024 World Series pick, Midwest Mallards over Metro Magics. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for all tuning in. Wasn't expecting to get through this episode this quickly. Um, I was definitely um, expecting maybe an hour plus, but I think this is good. It was a lot of information very quickly here. Um, as we get set now for weekly episodes of the MLW Vault podcast, don't expect super long episodes of these series previews. I think the first one will probably be the longest because we're going to go over our power rankings before um before we go into the full series preview. Um, but for this kind of upcoming like series of these series previews, um, you know, it's gonna follow like the same like script. It's gonna be we're gonna go over our um projected starting lineups and pitching matchups. We're gonna do storylines slash what's up for grabs and that can go kind of go in with standings. And then we're gonna go through our um my personal full predictions for what's gonna happen in the episode. So very exciting stuff here. The upcoming season of MLW is in days. We only have about four more sleeps before um, we watch the Midwest or before we watch the Metro Magic and Eastern Eagles face off at the Meadows in 2024 opening day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Bill and I will see you all on Wednesday. Peace.